Perth Linux Users Group, talking Linux and open source. Thanks, Michael, for inviting me along. Um, guys, uh, I'm just here on behalf of our team, really. Um, I get to um, talk to people like you uh, on the back of a lot of hard work that happens back, not just um, the guys at Landgate, but across all of the organisations we're working with that are publishing. Um, publishing the data. But there's a lot more that we need to do, and the open data policy that was launched in July really just gives us a little bit more of a, a push along. So it's really nailing our flag to the markets and saying this is, this is the direction for the state. So it's, it's very timely, it's useful for us, but we just feel like we're still at the tip of the iceberg, so there's a heap to do. So what I thought I'd do is um, talk presentation wise, I'll keep it pretty brief. Um, and just kind of take you through where we're at at the moment, where we're planning to be over time, uh, and then um, really interested in just having a conversation, getting some um, ideas from you, um, because we are at, still at a pretty formative stage, so it's lots of opportunity to steer in a few different directions, um, and there's a few um, kind of challenges, I guess, I'll give to you um, that'll help us um, shape that direction. So. It's, uh, there's an opportunity there. I'm going to duck over and press the down key on the mm -hmm. keyboard to keep it plugging along because I don't have a remote, but it's, there's not many slides, so I'll keep it pretty brief. So um, I don't know how many people in here pa have participated in GovPack either this year or previously. Anyone? There's a few, kind of half. Um, I think we can thank GovPack for helping to cement uh, the, the open data policy for WA. Um, there's, there's been a long history in WA, but, but GovHack over the last couple of years has really helped, I guess, a, a lot more people understand that this is actually quite useful making uh, all this information available, and there's some pretty smart people around who can actually do something pretty useful with it. Uh, so people uh, all over the state got that message, and, and it really um, helped drive that, that policy and make it happen. But there's quite a long history in WA. Um, you know, isolated capital city, isolated state. So we've had to work out our own way of, of doing things over time. Uh, we also don't have a hell of a lot of people here in WA, so we've had to work out some smart ways to do things over long distances. So all of those things help drive um, the exchange of information, and we've been doing it for over 30 years. My background, and, and a lot of the people I work with have a background in location-based or mapped information, spatial or GIS if you want to call it, all sorts of words that get tossed around. But it's basically location-based information. Anything from um, kind of literally digital maps through to addresses and those sorts of things. That's where our heritage in this area has come from. The open data policy talks about all data um, and having a bit of a practice run over the last 30 years with mapping-based data gives us a good starting point to do something with the broader set of information as well. Um, so we've been doing that since the 80s when you know that computing technology first became really accessible um, and we've used a lot of that experience we've gained over the last 30 years to feed into the policy and help us set the direction for that. So the policy is just, as I said, nailing the flag to the mast. There's a whole lot of stuff already happening in that space. GovPack's just a really good example um, of uh, what can happen if you make some useful information available to people. So the slide up here is just a bit of a, you know, it's a few pictures of, of what um, that atmosphere is about, how it's looked. There's some really interesting stories here that I won't talk about um, much here, but um, they're worth following up if you don't know much about the stories. Um, Sabi is a really interesting um, story. So a guy called Dave Newman, who was involved in search and rescue um, down around Rockingham, I think it was. Um, he had this idea about uh, an app that could support search and rescue efforts. This was in last year's GovPack. He used some information from the open data platform we had for mapping stuff called SLIP, or Shared Location Information Platform. Um, and they drew that into that. That's the little mapping-based app. But it's basically kind of a journey register system um, that would help people be able to find you or know that you were planning a journey um, or a trip, um, help rescue you if you needed rescuing. Great idea. The idea has developed and pivoted since then. So um, Dave and his 
crew have taken that along further. But the thing that was really interesting about that app was that the, the developer for that um, was, I think, 15 years old at the time, um, genius of a, of a kid, literally. Um, and, and so we were interested in tapping into that kind of young, um, interesting spark there as well. Talk about that a bit later. Bus hack is just an example of using um, public transport data. Another kind of example, this is a kind of cool stuff that you can look at. Um, worth kind of Googling that one as well. You'll find it in the GovPack site where you can track it down. Really interesting use and, and tells a bit of a story about how people actually move around the city. It's not real time, but it could be. I guess that's, that would be an interesting challenge for next year. And the rest of it is giving an idea of the atmosphere that we're dealing with. So a lot of ideas kick off on the Friday night, done over the weekend by the time they finish on Sunday night. A lot of those ideas have evolved very differently. It's a great um, opportunity for, for our team, the Open Data team, to get in there and understand how people are actually trying to use it. Even this year, after we've been doing this for three years, coming in here over the weekend, you kind of realise what you're missing. You think you're setting it up in an obvious way and making it easy, and then you realise just how tricky it is sometimes. So, you know, we've got a long way to go still on that front as well. The headline um, acts for what we're trying to do here is, you know, we're trying to help people realise that competitive advantage. So it is about um, startups and the entrepreneurial um, community in Perth. There's a lot of interest in that you see in the media, um, but there's a that people can't realise that without access to this information. Innovation technology part of that as well. That's what you guys are into. Open data policy um, launched at GovPack this year, and as I said, really just a signal to say, yeah, this is this government expects um, its agents to make that information available. Um, it's it's setting an expectation for everybody. There are data police going around and making sure that. You know, every single data set is published and um, made available as soon as it's created. That that doesn't happen, but it's setting an expectation, and it's up to us to help drive that demand. So we need people like you to help drive that demand for the information. Government expects this. You should expect it, and we really want to hear from you if you've got if you're trying to do something, and you've got an idea, and you need that information. That's what helps drive um, that information to be made available. It coincided with um, some work around the intellectual property side of things as well. So there's a few things that have come together in the last few months, which is helpful. Obviously, if you're making data and information available, you've got to protect the, I the IP around the original information, but also the ideas that are created there as well. As I said, the expectation is that we make it available for the general public. Obviously, there's some information that's potentially sensitive or identifies individuals. There, there are protections around that, and the policy is quite, um, quite open around um, accepting that. It's just, I guess what we're saying is that uh, the general expectation is it should be public available, unless you've got a really good reason not to, to do that, and you can justify that. Easily discoverable, that, that's kind of an interesting term, and the old discovery idea gets bandied around a fair bit. Typically, that's been, well, if we make it available in a search engine somewhere, um, in, a, in a formal catalogue, then people will be able to discover it. That's one way of doing it, but is that what you actually need is for people to be able to basically stumble across it through lots of different ways in. Um, so yes, we'll do some work around the catalogue side of things, we already have something around that, and we'll do some more work on that. But we're not blind to the fact that that's not the only avenue for doing it. So that's one of the things I'm interested in hearing <coughs> from you guys around. Um, how you go searching for things, how you find things, uh, other information. And available at no or low cost. Um, in a lot of cases, the information is created and it's really a pretty simple process of publishing and there are no great costs associated with doing that. There are a few examples where under various bits of legislation information, um, there's, there's various charges that are applied to that. But that's the exception rather than the rule. A couple of other key things. So these are the headline acts in the policy, as I said, setting the direction. Um, the format, basic formats. So the, the raw data in some reusable form. Yeah, common delimited files. Well, that's PDF um, and machine readable. So even better if we can move to um, web services and APIs um, that people can connect to. That's that's really where we're trying to trying to head. Um, that's definitely part of the furniture now. So that, that's another expectation. 
there's a little journey along the way and I'll, I'll share some anecdotes, I suppose, about the journey so far. And then license to allow people to pick up, pick up and use, and I'm not talking about a 20-page license agreement that people sign. Um, Creative Commons is one tool, and that's quite widely adopted now, um, even here in WA, where it's been more recently sort of picked up. Um, it's pretty quick and easy. It's a bit like a, um, a, a copyright symbol. Everyone kind of knows what that means, so it's implicit. Um, and when you pick it up, or it's explicit, I should say, and, and when you pick it up, um, the Creative Commons licensing, it's people know what that means just through a symbol. More about that later. Um, and just a bit more on that. So that's pretty much what I've just said there. If you've got licensing and it works for you, just use that. Don't don't overcomplicate it. Um, look at Creative Commons as an easy way to share the information because it's it's easy to get the information across. Um, I might skip that. That's just Creative Commons licensing if you haven't seen it before. Um, it's pretty basic. So it just uses symbols basically to, to let you know straight away what the what the publisher expects you to be able to do with that information. So it goes to everywhere from, um, well, just acknowledge us as the source, right through to um, this, this is protected, you, you don't, we, you're not licensed to use it for commercial use, and everything in between. Uh, that's pretty much what that is. Some examples of how we've put it into use. So I talked about how we've had a bit of a heritage in doing this in the location and map space. This is one example of that. So this thing that has been around for a while. Um, the idea here is this is one way of finding information. So we've just, there's a few thousand data sets that are made available through this platform. This, as I said, tip of the iceberg. Um, but what we've done is bundled them up in some logical ways. So rather than people having to go and find every individual record um, or data set, it's, it's put into collections that people can access. So in this case, we've got some public services there. You can see those themes there, you know, culture and society, environment, infrastructure, uh, property and planning and resources. Well, that's, that's fairly obvious what those might be. And then drilling into those a bit further, here are various linkages here. So this is map stuff, and we've been able to make that available in a Google map form for the everyday person. A lot of times they'll go to one of these maps, they'll create a shortcut, and they'll never visit that other website again, which is fine. They've got what they need. And we've been able to set up those kind of services for lots of different businesses, a little custom view for them, or a common operating picture that's got all the information they need, they can put their own business stuff over the top, which is why they're doing it. WMS and WMTS, there's a couple of flavors of web services in there. There's web feature services in there as well. It's KML. So there's a few flavors, not a bad start, but lots of other things we could do there as well. And in some cases, we can make the data available in what it was uploaded in in the first place. That's okay. There's, there's a little bit of a start there. We're pretty, I guess, our experience with the um, things like GovHack over the last couple of years is that. You know, web services can be a bit scary for a lot of developers. There's a bit of fiddling around you have to do to connect to those. Again, API access is a lot easier. Good documentation around it makes life a lot easier for people. And if you haven't got that, then things like a common and limited file or the raw data is actually quite useful. You can play around with it. Um, this is an example of the licensing side of things. So, again, it sounds but it's as simple as this. So if someone's using this particular map presentation of the data, this, you, can, you can imagine this is also available as a web service feed with all of those endpoints in it. So if you want to pick it up programmatically, people can connect to that. They want to do that. And in this case, it's presented as a map. And you can see there's a link to the licensing there at the bottom of that little pop-up box there. That's it. It just says, here's the layout. This is the licensing associated with it. And that's it. And it's just a little badge uh, there. So it's not complicated. Um, people have got that idea. And then there's a link off to the Creative Commons there if you want to do more information. This was our um, first go at a, at a catalog last year. So we used to have just a list of all the data, which is one way of doing it. Um, last year, we launched this thing, which is a, a, takes it a step further. This is similar to some of the other portals you see around. So here's a, one, another way of finding the information. So rather than me going to those pre-configured sets, Here's um, a, a catalog that I can search. So I'm just going to put in um, coast, as I did there. I'm just in stuff on the coast. Um, so it shows me 
what area the data covers. There's a bit of metadata in there that tells me about where it's come from. And then um, in that little record there, I can find the tags and a link to the data. And again, there's all the flavors um, that are available for that one. I can grab those and stick those into my application if I want, if I want that data stream to me. And as the data is updated in the background, you get that as well. Um, so that's one way of doing it. There's also there's been an API connected for that, uh, which has been quite useful. Unfortunately, Google have decided to decommission the little platform we were using for this called Google Maps Engine, so we're going to have to switch to another one over the next few months. But there'll still be the same types of services there. All of those will be in mind. Um, so pretty straightforward connection. So compare that, which is, you know, let's sort of go back to searching there, to what happens in other states at the moment. So this is the Commonwealth one. This is the Commonwealth app, uh, open data platform, data.gov.au. Pretty similar. There's a little search thing up the top. I can put in post there, and it'll turn up similar kind of results. I think I've got an example in there. Have I? Have you? Yeah. Um, so this is interesting. So very similar results there. There's a list of the stuff. And underneath, you can see those different formats there. But in this case, there's um, the CSV format file. There's a JSON file in there as well, and HTML. There's a few other connectors. So um, there's even a PDF in that last one there. Not so useful. Um, but you've got to start it somewhere. So in the lead up to GovHack um, a few weeks ago, a month ago now, um, it was quite interesting. The, the policy was just coming out. There was a message that went out to all the um, agencies here in WA. And they basically said, we expect you to publish some stuff for GovHack. Go forth and do it. We got a lot of phone calls back at the Landgate end, and we put our little team into action, all three of us, and <laughs> dealt with the phone calls. And it was, it was a real journey. So you had people coming from all over the place. People had never touched this stuff before. That's good. And you have conversations with them. And they go, right, I've got some data to share with you. And it's, here it is. And they'll send you a link to a website, their website somewhere, with a PDF document on it. OK, so there's point one in the conversation. You go back and say, well, there's some information in that report that's kind of interesting. Can we get access to that? Da -da -da -da, goes back. Oh, yeah, sure. We'll send you a chart. So there was one example, some data. It was a report. And it had quite a simple chart in it showing uh, with, a, with a graph in it with about six points on the graph. And we said, oh, that's quite interesting. Can we get can you share that data behind that? Sure we can. Uh, a few minutes later, I got the email. Here it is, Excel file with six records in it. Here are the data points for the chart. OK. So you take another conversation, you go back um, with them a little bit further. Eventually, you get sort of to the root of it. And on, I think it was the day before, I go, it might have even been the morning of, um, we got another phone call. What's this about licensing? What does that mean? And you have the conversation with people. So it's, it's a little journey that people go on. But those conversations have continued afterwards. There's a lot more involved. And you're just helping people get their head around. Once they do it once, and they get something in there, sky doesn't fall. People go, actually, that wasn't too, too bad. Here's a bunch of other stuff, and people get going. So we've got to do that times about 10,000, I think. Nice to have a few conversations, but need to do it in a different way. Um, the other thing, I guess, to keep in mind is that GovHack did help drive the interest in that. It doesn't just magically happen. Just because we have a policy in there doesn't mean people go, right, let's all go. It's got to be driven by something. Events are quite good. Questions um, from the public and industry and different interest groups are also good. Um, and an expectation that um, you need access to the information to be informed is also good. So all of those things are important. Um, I guess my ch challenge number one for, for you guys is if, you've, if you're working on a project or you're interested in um, trying to get data for, to solve something, then um, nail us at opendata at landgate.wa.gov.au. Um, that's a good starting point. You have to do it via email just for the next few weeks until we have something up and running where you can kind of um, lodge it yourself just by clicking. Um, but for the time being, we're quite interested in questions people are trying to answer, because then we can go and find out what data exists um, for you and do a little bit of work there. That's challenge number, number one. Um, over the next um, few weeks, in fact, some work we're doing right now um, is setting up something that looks more like this. So that kind of slip thing I showed you before, oops, 
um, this thing here, that will change uh, more to something that looks like um, this. Again, simple search, some, a platform that handles data rather than mapped data, so it can be pretty much anything. Um, and then if we've got a decent platform to publish that in, then it makes it easy for people to do it themselves. We don't have to manage it all as we have been in the last few years. Um, so that, that'll appear over the next couple of months. I can't give you a, a, a date yet, but certainly um, before the end of the calendar year, well before the end of the calendar year. Um, and that, that'll be the kind of next step we want to take. The other thing that we will have appear in that, a little bit later this year, is um, we'll have a basic search like that, but then we're planning on having our kind of try our experimental search. So we're working with a research program at the moment um, on a human language query. So rather than um, trying to look for a keyword, actually putting in a phrase or something that um, connects things together or a few keywords, and we're going to use um, some experimental work we're doing at the moment on how those how those are connected together and how we as humans might interpret that. Um, so we're going to collect some research data on the types of questions people are asking. So have a go at that when you see it here. Um, but that's where we see the, the future of that is that type of search. So I might put in a question rather than put in keywords and then I'll get some source information that can help me answer that question. Um, that's that's where things are, are heading. Um, so that's uh, that's that. I think I've just about wrapped it up. Oh yeah, and self-publishing. So that's the that's the other little impediment we have at the moment is um, Landgate is the agency. But this is managing the publication process. That's quite an overhead for us, and not really needed with this new platform. So increasingly, we'll push that out to other people to publish their own data doesn't have to be restricted to government, that's just where our mission is at the moment and obviously we've got some, um, some impetus to do that, but it doesn't necessarily have to be restricted to that. We do have some community group data and some other data sets in there at the moment which are good examples. I think that's, that's really it for the presentation, so um, I'm really interested in having a bit of a conversation about it um, at this point, I'm sure we have some questions or have some suggestions for where we might take this. Go ahead, yeah. for it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. On the, the uh, federal um, data it showed the number of data sets. Are you tracking the number of data sets over time to show progression as, as agencies come on board and start publishing? Thank you for that question. And it wasn't a Dorothy Dixer, so that's good. <laughs> um, yeah, we will do. We haven't, we haven't decided on what sort of things will appear on the website or anything, but we will be. But the, I guess the measures that we're interested in are and this is picking up a bit of experience from interstate and overseas. We're not we're not focused so much on the absolute number because that's that's a kind of way to drive to the bottom of the barrel. Yes, um, what you'll end up with is a lot of data that's really crappy. Yeah. So we um, so what we're going to do is uh, we've got um, some targets around certain types of information that we don't have much of at the moment. So filling in some gaps. We're also interested in those questions that I asked before. So they're really important. Um, there's plenty within government that we can look at, but some community input on that would be really fantastic. Um, and our plan is probably to focus more on um, some interesting case studies and things that we put up there. Yes, we'll, we'll have some metrics around what's available and, and what sort of information is available, um, but the number won't be a focus. Right. Good question. Next. I'm just using a Creative Commons licenses. That's um, one option. There's, I mean, one thing I get annoyed about them is that there's a huge range, where you yep. get all the way from just a buy a license, which you can do pretty much anything, yep. through to the other end of no derivatives, no, no commercial use, and when people just say Creative Commons, it sort of doesn't really mean much. Which, yep. which end of the spectrum are you usually using? Uh, all, all, I'm afraid. Um, so the expectation is the simplest, so that would be B1. Um, that's the expectation, unless people have got a good reason to do something else with it. And they may, but it'll be the exception rather than the rule. But it will be a bit of a self-management thing. We don't have, like I said, we don't have open data police going around and, and examining those things in detail. It's a, it's a, I think we, we will be driven by the community expectation there. Um, you were showing an example of CCAN, which yep. is a tool that I've got and .gov.au both use. Yep. Um, is that going to be the tool for the yep. next one? 
Yeah. <laughs> I didn't want to have to correct you for doing anything that you didn't want to do. You know, should. Yep. Uh, yes, it will be. Yeah, it's being built as we speak. Or set up as we speak. <laughs> so much. Yeah. I'm glad that's good news. Could get everything out of slip all weekend. Got everything from that Okay. Literally. And totally get that. <laughs> yeah. So uh, I'd be interested to know what sort of feedback you've had from other government agencies. Um, I know you sort of mentioned that a few people were, like, you know, they had PDFs or they weren't really, yeah. they didn't really understand the idea of opening up and making the machine yeah. readable. Um, but how, have people been excited about it or have they been like, a bit worried about all their data you know, being, being given um, away? Yes and yes. So okay. I think there's, there, there definitely is a kind of it's the right time thing and I think, um, People got pretty excited about GovPack. What was really interesting is you heard, you heard that being talked about um, even in the public sector at quite senior levels, so people kind of got it. Um, you, obviously, when GovPack first appeared on the scenes, people kind of, you want to do what? Um, <laughs> interesting name. But, it was, but we've gone past that, that pretty quickly. And yeah, it did, it did drive heavily the, um, you know, the finish of that policy. Um, and yes, there are definitely people around that go, ooh, I'm not, I'm not so sure. So I think every presentation I've been to about this stuff over the last few months, and I've done a few of them, there's at least, um, there's been at least two questions from people that I know are data publishers saying, oh look, I'm really not sure because my data is complex and people really need to have a conversation with me because I know my data and it's much better if, they, if there's a phone number and they ring me up and speak to me. Um, mm. Or um, I'm really opening myself potentially to legal action here, so I'll need to put in safeguards. And our answer to that generally is the community expectation these days, in, and the way that we work with data, is that we can't we can't have every person who uses it having a conversation with you. That's just not going to work. So we need to find some other way of doing that. And secondly, um, we it's not just in WA. We've been doing this around the world and across Australia for a long time and the sky hasn't fallen in. We don't see people getting sued left, right and centre, so you're on pretty safe ground. There are, there are good safeguards um, and protections around um, the licensing and even within Creative Commons 4 now, um, there's some good safeguards in there. So, um, you know, the interests of publishers are quite well protected within that. But whether that's accepted by some people, I, I can't answer. Yeah. I can guess not. And it's well, just a little trip. That's it, because I don't where I work, I've got some data that I'd love to open up, but it's it's more a question of can I convince management that this is you know, good to give it out to everyone. Yeah. Call yeah. Dangini. Um, yeah. <laughs> well, and I don't, you know, like I said, we don't have the open data police saying thou shall do it, um, particularly if it's outside government. It's just, I think, again, we can... You can call on community expectation. It's just, you know, people have an expectation to that and they're right to do that. And yeah. secondly, the experience as well has shown that it, it, the sky doesn't fall down. But it's always, there's, it's always a starting point. And that's, I guess, what we've seen this year with, with GovHack and some other events too. And GovHack's not the only event that drives that. Um, people just saying, oh, look, I'll, I'll put a bit out there. Um, if you can get it past that, mm. then the rest is pretty easy because it, Actually, that wasn't too bad. I can get a little bit more, and then you get something going. Um, but just cracking that first one can be a challenge. Yeah, yeah. I think that's because I think uh, we, where I work, we had some very negative press recently. I think you know people were a bit worried about sure. anything going in. You know, West Australia, yeah. and all that data. Yeah. And, you, you know, like you can make things look look worse than they are if you just get certain bits of data. I think. But I, I think you're right. If we can get little bits out, and people will realise that you know, it's not so bad. The other thing too is that um, we can we can protect access we can we can um, step access to that information up gradually so it doesn't just because we publish it doesn't necessarily mean in the first instance it has to go to the whole world using the platform we have now we do we can share information peer to peer if we need to um, that's not what we like to do but we can do that so you can sort of play you can play that out a little bit for people um, and they. Um, it gives them a bit of comfort sometimes, but yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a tricky one and I'm under no illusion that that's actually probably the biggest challenge that we face, that because I get those questions so regularly that it's, there's quite a feeling out there about that. People are feeling a bit unsafe about it. Yeah. 
what else? Yeah. 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 Good. So who you're targeting? Who sees the moment that you're looking to convince right now? Who, who may not be over that? Actually, they're like not them. necessarily agencies that need to be convinced. It's just that we've never had the opportunity to do it necessarily with them. So I, I think um, in the areas, and it's not single net agencies necessarily, but um, in the areas of education, health, um, state finances, those sorts of things, they're, they're on definitely on high on the list yeah. for us. Um, and, it's, and again, it's not necessarily because they don't want to make the information available, it's just that we've never had a kind of driver and vehicle to make that information available. So I suppose they're, they're it's they're not their first reaction to firstly identify the information into the public, but if they can... Yeah, well, I guess, you know, some, people, some people see it as, well, I've got information on websites, it's open. Yeah. Um, it's not quite the same thing. So it's, you know, can we, can we at least... Um, I guess the first step in people being able to use information is to know it exists. That's kind of handy, and we're not even that far with a yeah. lot of information. So, you know, even having a link to somewhere through the open data um, platform, that's a pretty good start. Pretty happy with that. Um, and then you can sort of go from there. And what are you planning for GovHub for next year? We've got sort of 10 months now up your sleeve. Yeah, well, I, I think there's some opportunities to do things before before the next GovHack. I'm not necessarily talking about uh, another hackathon event, no. although I do, I do notice that. Nothing much happens now, <laughs> hackathon-wise, between July and when we get to March next year. So maybe a boot camp to warm up with or something. So if yeah. someone's got a good idea for one, that's, that's kind of interesting. What we see is um, two, two events a year to drop to come up with new ideas is, is okay. That's not bad. And there are others, other events around as well. Um, next week, we're actually running our first junior hackathon. So we've got 150 kids from across schools in Perth descending um, on Midland to do near, near Langate there obviously to do some do something else, something around this. It's a little bit of a different approach so they'll be kind of walked through a little bit but not too much hand holding uh, which will be really interesting um, and I think that experience of the 15 year old turning up last year and being able to develop the app for someone says that there's actually a lot of those kids out there we just don't have a, a good vehicle for finding them there's so we intend to there. fix that. So that'll be a heap of fun, but um, yeah, so there's, what we see as the major gap is that once we've got all these great ideas, and there's another pile of good ones that came out of GovHack this year, there's, there's not a clear way of actually doing something with them. So people like that <coughs> human and, the, and on the Sabi front, you know, through sheer will and persistence have taken that somewhere, but it's not easy. Um, and it, it, I don't think you can make it necessarily easy, but there's not a clear vehicle for doing that. There's, we're seeing more and more of those kind of accelerated programs, but they are, you know, they're identifying some some ones, and it's an opportunity for some, but not a broader spectrum there. So we're quite interested in being able to help out with that gap in there. There's some good stuff that we're not helping take to the next level. So that that you know the accelerator idea is quite interesting for us. Maybe we can do something to help in that front. Thanks. Pretty good questions. Are bound to be some more. Um, yeah. So, uh, I, obviously, Landgate is doing some really good stuff. Are there any other agency that you've been really impressed with that have come back and said, "Yeah, we've got lots of stuff"? Um, or is there any? Other? Uh, well, we've. I mean, we've been working consistently with about forty for the last um, decade or so. So it's quite yeah. a bit surface from there. It's been very location focused because that's what our heritage is in. Um, we've got a good vehicle to do a lot more with those 40 odd. I won't attempt to list them all, it's quite a lot in there. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and um, yeah, there's, there's some newbies to that picture as well. So yeah, quite interested in um, some more we can do with health and, and the education side of things. So there's some really good opportunities there. Um, I have to say that's been really good to be connected with Treasury and Finance through this as well, so I'm looking forward to getting some more information about, about that. Um, and also, um, you know, the Heritage Area State Records Office, there's some, there's some absolute gold in there. And again, it's, it's finding multiple ways into that information. Some of that's available in some form now, but having multiple ways of finding it and accessing it um, would be really cool. So there, there's some other areas that we could do something with. How cooperative has the following process been with the Department of Planning and Infrastructure been? Because 
just after that fact, in fact, I was looking for something and it was squarely in their territory that they have the most god awfully useless website imaginable for getting anything in the way of a record out of them. You'd you have more luck going in on, on their door. Um, and all they wanted to do was find out where they're planning to put a bridge across for the new stadium. Oh, and I'm going to go across to transport and find it in some PDF. And it's, uh, yeah, like, if, if the nice. guy's saying yes and no to these plans, they have copies. Right. They're public documents. Right. You're told to go and inspect them in all these council offices. Yeah. They're the master copy. Yeah. You know, they've got a mountain of it. Are they being cooperative, just not releasing it yet? I mean, it doesn't fit quite what you have now, but certainly... Well, it's very location-based. Um, so, yes, it does. It, but um, it's a mountain of PDFs, typically, you know, yeah, blueprints yeah. and that sort of thing. Uh, Department of Planning um, are one of those organisations we've been working with for some time. But again, it's been very focused, what we've been looking at. So, yep, definitely an opportunity in, in that space. There's a lot of information we could surface. And it, and it fits really well into some of the stuff that we're talking about here. Um, and it's broadly appealing. So, um, yeah, look, I wouldn't say... Um, yeah, I wouldn't say they're uncooperative. It's just there's a big, there's a lot of information in there. So again, thinking about the sort of questions we're getting asked, and that kind of that thing about where you know this is happening now, I really need to know about this, and I need to, I need it to, I need to explore it in another way than a PDF. That's really good Which because that says would have been fine for me. I mean, because when I eventually found the PDF, it was quite accurate. It had mm. all the markings for a construction plan. It was yep. the, the overview plan for the actual site. Right. It was yep. the site works plan document. Perfect. So I, um, I had an example there before. Actually, that mapping example, <laughs> interestingly enough, that's a, that's a planning example. That, that's pretty interesting um, looking at that particular map. You'll notice that there's some very particular colors and styling in there. Mm. So what we've, one of the little um, journeys we had to take with this one is actually presenting it in a way that's consistent with s s ways it's been presented in other forms. So that that data there is actually presented in the same way that it is on a PDF. So there's a particular styling that's applied to that. We've got a way of doing that. Um, but there's only, you know, you can see here under, well, there's property and planning. There's a bucket of data, right? And th there's some information on regional schemes and structure plans and those things. That's okay. That's, that's good foundational stuff. Um, and we've done also done some work with, um, you know, precincts and areas where things are planned over the next few years. That's available through there as well. But it's again tip of the iceberg kind of stuff. There's there's definitely a lot more we could do there. Planning, uh, as you say, ha there's a lot of data there that um, we could surface there. So lot, lots of work to do. But you've got to kind of start somewhere. Question: The questions are really important. Three for Michael. He's got the Fredo frog so far. <laughs> so, um, what sort of um, legislative and um, regulatory um, impediments do you have to um, presenting some data? I was th I'm thinking about things like um, certificates of title and uh, other particular surveying um, information, which, as I understand, it, most of it is only available at a payment of a fee because of legislative requirements. Um, yeah, general, it's generally um, for data as a whole. There's not a lot of impediments there. Um, I think there's um, there's some uh, data that tends to be um, the next level in terms of access. So you've got public and open access, and you've got other levels. Yeah, there's some there's some legislation around that um, has scheduled fees um, for those sorts of things. Yep, that's true, and it's. And although other jurisdictions have open data policies and there's a cry of um, it's, it's open and therefore free, it's, it's not actually the reality. It's not just unique to WA, it happens in other jurisdictions as well. It's just um, uh, not acknowledged sometimes. So the open and free thing gets mixed up a little bit sometimes. An open data policy doesn't mean it's necessarily free. It is most of the time. And, and the policy says our expectation is that unless you've got a reason to charge for data, then you shouldn't be applying a charge to that data. But there is definitely some information that um, there is a fee applied to. And there is, there's also scope for organisations where there's a value add to the information and there's, there's some value recognised in that, then there's an option to apply that. Uh, we don't see that exercised yet, but that's, that potentially 
um, can be there. You just haven't seen it so far. Is there a long-term view for who's likely to wind up the custodian for this kind of information? Because looking at where it's been sort of handed so far, it doesn't really match where you'd probably expect the actual budget to come for this kind of work. I mean, it, it's with Landgate mostly from what I can see so far in the efforts, but it, it jurisdiction-wise, it's kind of more up the alley of the state records department. Um, but they're an un incredibly underfunded department versus someone that's in a progressive position. So, I mean, is, is there a, a, anyone who's actually fighting to truly own it that wants to make sure it stays for the next 25 years or more? Well, I think um, the, the data, which is what we're, is, is the resource here, it, it's always going to be created by a different organisation. So the, the best approach is to be able to source it directly and without a lot of human intervention from wherever it's created. That was the principle behind SLIP and it's the same with, open, with the open data platform. We want to be able to set up processes where people can access it through one point but it doesn't have to be gathered into one bucket. Um, we definitely don't want to do that. Uh, it's particularly when we're, you know, part of the journey we've taken the last few years is around cloud -based, a cloud-based platform. That's a pretty interesting kind of journey on itself. But we've, we've gone through most of that without too many um, dramas because you're creating a, a view of information that exists somewhere. That's a, that seems like a pretty good approach. We've just got to turn the dial up on, on, what, on the amount that we're sharing there and the quality of it. Um, so um, so there's, not, there's not intended to be and, and there's been no discussion about a central um, holder of all the data that's responsible for all of that. It's got to Individual organisations have got to take responsibility for the data that they publish, including making that publicly available. It's best they do it. In terms of the platform, the reason Landgate's got it really is because we've had some experience in doing that over the last 30 years or so in sharing that, the location-based information. Well, it's one type of information, but the principles are basically the same, so that's where it is. Um, there's no discussion at the moment about um, that moving anywhere else in government, but you know, governments evolve over time, so I can't say what would happen in the future. Right now, we're, we're being supported by other organisations um, and we have a, uh, an appropriation to support um, some effort on this front. So that's, that's where it is at the moment. But uh, on the contrast though, with not trying to ha have a central archive of these data sets, as an agency is decommissioned and a new one is started up, then the impetus of the data set that the previous agency had and even the assets they were, were storing that on disappeared. Um, is there any any thoughts around long-term archive of some of these data sets by SRO so that you know, this year's geospatial information isn't lost in 50 years' time? Well, there is, um, you know, there's um, records legislation and requirements around that, so agencies are required to, to Should. you know, to make <laughs> sure they, they do that. That's a requirement. Um, there's no particular discussion around um, any any separate arrangement to go and back all that but up. But I guess with the comprehensive catalogue, that becomes a pretty trivial thing to do for, yeah. for SRO. Yeah, and look, it, and you know, a, a published version of data that's stored there and accessible from there, that's, that's a pretty good option. Mm. Um, I guess, you, you know, agencies will have to work out what they do with the original record and where that's stored, and that's, that's completely their um, remit to, to yeah. deal with that. We're dealing with, uh, at, at a minimum, we're dealing with a published version of that of that data. Do you think there's any chance this legislation will, or not legislation, so this policy will become stronger, like but perhaps become legislation or become more, more of a mandate that, you know, unless you have a good reason, you must publish it openly? Um, uh, that's, that's not been discussed and it doesn't seem likely. You, but it doesn't yeah. seem likely to me. I, yeah, it's, the, the issue is, I guess, if you do that, then you have to police it somehow, mm -hmm. um, no matter, and, and that would apply in the broader community as well. And, that, and then you have to resource it and do all those sorts of things. Far better that the community, that the policy matches community expectation and the community helps drive that along. I think that's the way it's always been, and it's the case here. Um, does anyone else have any questions? All right, well, look, thank you. Thank you very much. It's been fascinating. Um, it's something that, look, I'm personally really passionate about. I think it's, it's really good, and I think Langate's done some amazing work. You've done some amazing work. Um, so, look, thank you very much. Um,
You're welcome. My pleasure. Thank you.